share with us your views on the prevailing state of the motor industry when we look at it from multiple stakeholder perspectives. So today what has happened is uh, after having gone through that challenging period, companies are having some relief. So going forward, people are expecting something positive in this industry. Tax hikes definitely has put the prices, vehicle prices and the commodity prices up. This challenge will continue. So up until our economy situation is recovered and then uh, vehicle prices are to come down, this challenge will continue. Unfortunately, I think uh, the current situation doesn't allow us to capitalize on the entire capacity it has. I think, yes, there is a good demand. There is some import that is allowed in the future. Sri Lanka's motor industry is flourishing. We spoke about the dynamics of the sector with the group chairman and managing director of David Peary's motor company, Rohana Disanayaka. Stay tuned. Some bonds give more returns, get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. Hello and welcome to LMD TV. Tonight on the forum, the topic of discussion is the motor industry. And with us, we have the group chairman and managing director of David Perry's motor company, Rohana Disanayaka. Mr. Disanayaka, it's very nice to have you on the show with us. Good afternoon, Rohandi, for having me here. And thank you, LMD TV, for inviting me for this program. To start off our discussion, can you share with us your views on the prevailing state of the motor industry when we look at it from multiple stakeholder perspectives? Well, I think uh, motor industry is going, in general, going through a tough time. I think after COVID uh, in 2021 20, also, the imports have been curtailed. And I would say it has virtually come to a zero up until very recent where the government came up with a program to allow certain imports under local value addition program. But uh, before that, I think most of the traders, motor companies in particular, was not allowed to import any vehicle. Uh, so, you know, that the impact was there throughout with regard to uh, all the stakeholders, uh, customers, the companies who are marketing, as well as the other external stakeholders who are kind of providing services and various other related services. So today what has happened is uh, after having gone through that challenging period, uh, companies are having some relief with regard to importing of vehicles under this NBA program. So going forward, uh, people are expecting something positive in this uh, industry. And Mr. Disanayaka, what are the emerging trends you see in the industry? Well, like I uh, said earlier, it's uh, mostly to do with local value addition. Uh, if you look at it as an as a emerging trend, uh, because the imports are not possible to be uh, done uh, with regard to vehicles, what people ought to do is uh, they tend to provide, uh, depend on uh, mostly on after sales services. So most companies are focused on providing, uh, uh, getting uh, uh, or their vehicle uh, service operations expanded into uh, outstations and thereby to offer better service to customers and to gain numbers. Now that's one aspect. The other is uh, importing of spare parts because uh, as the vehicle gets older and older, what is required is the servicing. So to cater that, they do this. The latest with regard to uh, motor vehicle imports is that companies are getting into local value addition program where the, you have to give either 20% or 30% local value addition based on the category of uh, product that you market. If it's a four-wheeler, it's about 20%. If it's a two-wheeler, it's about roughly 30%. So what happens is uh, the companies are compelled to work with uh, local industries where the comp components have to be sourced through them and thereby uh, providing some opportunities for those component manufacturers also to give some local employment opportunities. 
So this is the trend, but uh, you know, unless those companies are having the muscle to uh, carry this uh, entire program forward, it has become a real challenge. So uh, as a short term measure, most are getting into this program. Import restrictions are being lifted and we are hearing rumours that the government is considering relaxing the bans on vehicle imports. If this is true, how soon can we expect this? Well, uh, with regard to that, I find it difficult to give any statement as such. But however, as a country, I mean, uh, as a country that is developing, uh, mobility has to be at a different level. So people getting from point A to point B, point B to point C has become that much important. So vehicles are the ones that are fulfilling that requirement. So it is, uh, it is a necessity in my case, in my opinion, uh, to have vehicles on the road. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, I do not know when this uh, import uh, restriction will be lifted, but however, more emerging trends like uh, allowing electric vehicles, maybe hybrid vehicles, promoting hybrid vehicles, that program may start, but those are yet to happen. But up until those things happen, right, uh, the industry may have to focus more on uh, providing after-sales service and then uh, gaining some income. As much as possible, uh, focus on uh, the technology to uh, you know, improve the efficiencies and to run businesses. Mr. Visanayaka, the recent tax hikes are impacting cost of living and basically business and life to everyone. And this is also impacting the motor industry, not only for vehicles, but also for spare parts. How is the industry coping up with this when we look at all stakeholders? Yeah, tax hikes definitely has put the, the prices, vehicle prices and the commodity prices up. Now, if you are in, a, in, in this competitive industries, tax sizes are quite normal. But what has happened in Sri Lankan context is that uh, the cost of living has really gone up. So creating a situation where their disposable income levels have gone down. As a result, the affordability factor has become a real, real <coughs> challenging uh, uh, at the moment. So what happens now is earlier people used to acquire vehicles mostly on easy payment schemes through finance companies, through bank loans, etc. But today what has happened is because the installment has gone up and their disposable income levels have come down, paying back that rental has become really tough. So going, which is the very reason why the numbers have come down. But however, uh, with all those challenges still, there is a reason number, reasonable number of vehicles are being exchanged, uh, you know, as second-hand vehicles in the industry. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it uh, it goes as much as up to 5,000 transactions per month, uh, but this is subject to further verifying. Uh, so this challenge will continue. So up until our economy situation is recovered, and then uh, vehicle prices are coming, come vehicle prices are to come down, this challenge will continue. We are also seeing the automobile component manufacturing industry really reviving and actually becoming a good foreign exchange earner. What is your assessment of this situation? Uh, well, with this local value addition program introduced by Ministry of Industry, local component manufacturers have to play a role. So it's a good program to continue with and because it provides a lot of job opportunities and also uh, is some of the pressure that uh, government also is having. Uh, the, the question here is how many companies could get into this program because uh, initially for you to get into that program a large amount of money is required. So a small timer will find difficult to get in there. Uh, but said that uh, it's a good program because what as a country we should be looking at is encourage these local component manufacturers to produce components and to export, look at export markets because that's what this country requires. So I think this can be considered as a baby step to get in there. So with this LVA program or local value addition program introduced by, by, by the government, uh, you are slowly getting there, so, which is a good sign. The assembly of vehicles, especially bikes and three-wheelers, are also flourishing. Uh, what are the opportunities you see here? Well, uh, if the market opens, I think uh, there will be a good uh, potential to market in numbers because I believe at this moment of time uh, the demand is suppressed. 
because of the economic situation in the country, uh, assembly, hardly any assemblies are taking place. But as far as David Perry's uh, motor company is concerned, we have set up our state-of-the-art facility in Ranna, where we uh, have uh, housed about 200 employees. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at, I mean, at the time that we installed this or rather started this operation, we had a capacity to cater to 500 motorcycles and 503 wheelers a day. But with the vehicle imports being restricted, it, in fact, it came down to zero. So we had a tough time in managing these people. Uh, but what we did was, uh, under this LVA program, we, we were able to get down at least 2,000, 1,000, 2,000 motorcycles a month for the last couple of uh, months or so. So now we are regaining some momentum of uh, redeploying these resources to uh, assemble these vehicles. Uh, the question is, uh, if you are to do a proper assembly facility, I believe there is a large amount of money, like I said earlier, is required because uh, now our facility in Rana has a state-of-the-art uh, uh, modern technology that we are using and it is con uh, you know, fitted with a conveyorized belt which is co considered to be the Sri Lanka's first uh, such operation. So uh, unfortunately I think the current situation doesn't allow us to capitalize on the, on the entire, uh, entire capacity it has but however with this uh, limited uh, uh, option given to us to import some vehicles we are managing the entire thing to some extent. But uh, to answer your question in very brief, I think yes, there is a good demand. There is, a, there is some import uh, is allowed in the future. It's now time to take a very short break, but we'll soon be back to talk more about the motor industry. Display your brand message on digital screens at Prime Locations. At Prime Locations. The largest digital advertising network in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. Emerging Media. You're mobile, and so are we. Gets me going. Grab the Light 87 app at the Apple App Store or Google Play now. 87.8 and 87.6 Island Wide. Light 87. Welcome back to the show. We are in conversation with the Group Chairman and Managing Director of David Peary's Motor Company, Rohan Adisanayaka. Mr. Desanayaka, if I ask you about quality, how important is it for us to maintain quality standards, especially when we look at manufacturing and assembling of motor vehicles? Oh, Rwandi, I think that's one of the critical things because we know, let aside the vehicles, motorcycles or three-wheelers, uh, I think anything, right, we look for the quality. Now at David Peary's Motor Company for Bajaj products, we are very concerned and even for the new four-wheeler that we just launched bike from China uh, SUV. It's in 1500 cc. The quality is of paramount that we have to ensure. So we are very focused on that. Now in our setup, I think we have got quality engineers and quality unit to ensure that each and every vehicle that we put out is uh, complied with the necessary standards. Uh, now, uh, having spoken about the vehicle. I believe even after sales service or spare parts also requires quality, which is why you would have seen in the case of Bajaj, we run a lot of advertisement awareness programs to ensure that our customers use only genuine spare parts. Because when you get a vehicle and you, when you start using it, it's important that the vehicle has to perform to its expectation. If you had to you know, spend hours or days in the workshops, it's not going to help you. So, to that extent, quality in the spare parts is important. Similarly, the quality of offered by our service dealers and our workshops. So there has to be a stringent uh, uh, knowledge uh, sharing sessions among these people to ensure that they get the required knowledge to give the necessary services. And uh, therefore, you know, to ensure the quality. So this is an ongoing program as far as David P's uh, motor company is concerned. Given today's climate and energy crisis, we are seeing a surge in the demand for electronic vehicles. What is your assessment of the market opportunity here? Yeah, that is true because, uh, you know, if you look at Sri Lanka, we all know, you know, importing fuel was a challenge, I mean, a few months ago or maybe one year ago. We all know that we all were in queues to pump petrol. So the government found it difficult to uh, import uh, fuel required uh, the country. So they came up with various programs. 
but however uh, you know for the future having a, a cost saving uh, mode of transportation solutions is a, is a requirement so hence the reason why electric vehicles will become very handy so but with electric vehicles i think what is required is the infrastructure to uh, to service the vehicle uh, also to charge the vehicle and also to uh, you know uh, measure its performances so i think if you look at uh, overall electric vehicles are important and it's the latest trend in the world as well so if you go to a country like china uh, the penetration levels have gone up to as much as 40% but uh, in some other some other countries in the asia in asia it is not so because infrastructure is not so developed but we as a company david peris uh, motor company is looking at uh, setting up our own charging stations uh, and also to introduce an electric car very soon so the idea of this entire thing is to keep up Uh, keep uh, in pace with the current trends in the industry and thereby to uh, offer a superior product to the customer which will eventually give them that economy so scale economy that they're expecting this is a like if i ask you how ready is the motor industry and of course all its stakeholders to gear up for what is coming in the next 24 months well motor industry uh, if you look at today uh, like i mentioned at the inception is going through a tough time so most companies have i know uh, had offered certain voluntary retirement schemes to employees they have got rid of and they have downsized their operations so certain companies have gone out of business also so 24 months uh, if you are to uh, talk about it's a very difficult uh, question to answer but however companies on their own have come up with their own uh, answers some have expanded their uh, service uh, network thereby to f- give more focus on after sales service and income uh, sources on 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 that basis and uh, some also have uh, kind of uh, basically gone into other business areas or diversified uh, uh, the uh, you know businesses to other areas so i believe uh, that is one uh, way that companies have looked at but uh, in the case of david peris motor company what we are looking at is uh, focusing more on our network and then uh, working uh, on after sales service opportunities uh, in order to uh, get the maximum benefit from uh, spare parts and service incomes but on in the area of vehicles uh, certainly uh, we are getting down bajaj city 100 bajaj discovery uh, motorcycles now lately we introduce uh, the bike uh, 1.5 liter uh, petrol engine suv so all those will help us survive in the next 24 uh, months in my opinion we're almost at the end of our conversation but before we let you go uh, are there any concluding thoughts that you would like to share with our audience today yeah so uh, i think uh, it's important uh, that uh, whatever we do we do with certain uh, commitment and uh, at the same time having the right focus and also uh, having the skillful people uh, i think people are also is a factor here to you know make any operation or a business successful uh, so what we believe at david peris motor companies uh, you know do the basics right and then uh, you you expect the rest to follow you and which is the very reason why uh, Bajaj has become so successful in Sri Lanka. Uh, today, if you uh, look at Sri Lanka, the vehicle population roughly goes up to 8 million. Of that, about roughly 2.5 to 3 million are sold by David Peace Motor Company. Uh, and uh, we are happy to say, every one out of vehicle that are that is moving on the road is a Bajaj. So. we did not uh, do anything special there we all fo- what we did was we focused on the after sales service and we set up that uh, dealer network uh, which gave the convenience to the customers and when they started believing in the product and the brand naturally the product equity was uh, accepted and thereby it became a success so i it's important in for any business right to have that focus and the commitment 
to do the best that you uh, could so that uh, and you allow the rest to follow you. We've been in conversation with the group chairman and managing director of David Peary's motor company, Rohan Adisanayaka. It was lovely having you on the show with us. So thank you very much, Rohanadi, for inviting me for LMD TV. And a pleasure, I think, coming here and then uh, facing this interview. Thank you. And to all our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.